What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video was gonna be something completely different and then I got all up in my feels about some stuff and decided why not be open and vulnerable and share that with you guys. I love doing that, hopefully it will inspire you. So today is gonna to be about self-worth and self-love. What's it got to do with anybody else but you? First, let me address why I'm gonna do this massively personal overshare with you guys of some of my struggles and things that I've learned. And that's because I think it's important for you all to know that even though you look at people on Instagram and you're you're doing the, the highlight reel every morning when you're in bed and you're comparing yourself to them, that's not really what life is like. People ask me all the time, how did I get so confident? How did I do this? How did I do that? It's a practice it's a daily practice and i am just like you where i have days where i wake up and i'm like yes let's take on the world and then i also have days where i wake up and i'm like i'm a crumb i'm a crumb and nobody nobody cares and i can't do this and i'm failing at this and i'm failing at that we are human you are allowed to go up and down in your emotions it is simply how you address it and how you treat yourself when you're having those moments that's what makes all the difference. So I want you to understand that I am just like you and that everybody you follow on your feed is just like you. This pandemic has for sure been hard on a lot of us and I think a lot of us are up in our feels about a lot of things. We've lost some of that stuff that makes us feel like we have purpose. Maybe some of you have gone through breakups, some of you have lost loved ones. There is a lot of, of pain and hurt and struggle right now and that can really play with your self-worth. One of the things that I did today, I woke up, I wasn't feeling myself, I was all up in my feels, feeling kind of just a bit like a sorry sack. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm 35 and I'm single and everybody else is married and has babies and what am I doing with my life and why can't I figure it out? I think the pandemic has really made uh, these emotions just a smidge stronger. It hasn't been easy building my career. It hasn't been easy building my confidence. It hasn't been easy building me. I've made a lot of mistakes. I definitely upset people along the way. I've definitely upset myself along the way. It's human to do that. But I think now more than ever, we need to be able to be vulnerable, to be compassionate and to give each other support in a very loving way while we're navigating through some massive stuff, pandemic, civil rights movement, change in this country, unrest in this country, an election coming up. And I think it's really important for us to come from a place of love and understanding when talking to those around us. My journey with self-love started uh, about five years ago and it's still a journey and still a learning process. Uh, I was newly single and up until that point I had been a serial monogamous my entire life. I had no idea that's what I was doing but I was jumping from one relationship to the next and I truly did not give myself time to grow or know myself at all without a man attached to me. And within that, I didn't really know what I stood for. I didn't even know what I liked to do on my own time. I would eat the food they wanted to eat, hang with the people they wanted to hang with. And I was molding into this person that I thought they wanted me to be. And that made it really, really difficult to have a healthy relationship, not only with the person I was with, but also with myself. The strong, confident, independent woman that I am today didn't, she existed, but she was hidden. She wasn't shining and she wasn't thriving. I, that woman was lost somewhere behind a mask that she wore to continuously stay in relationships because somehow that was what made her feel worthy and accepted and loved. Truly, those relationships would take more than they gave, not because solely of the other person, but because of my own actions. Eventually, that became unhealthy enough for me to see it, for the universe to give me enough signs and for me to turn around and go, something needs to give, something needs to change, and it's gotta be me. You know, at some point, I had to accept that the problem wasn't these other men, the problem was me. I was the common denominator. I was the consistent thing in all these relationships that, that were going wrong, that were turning toxic, that were bad, that were unhappy, that were destructive. It was me. It is not easy to admit your place in these things. It's not easy to admit that you're attracting them to you or creating these situations in your world. We don't want to take the responsibility of that because it hurts and it's easier to blame it on someone else. But the best thing we can do is look inward and figure out, okay, 
what can I do to change this instead of constantly being in the same place and constantly blaming someone else. And you know, in some way, I know that I was attracting these things, not because it's what I wanted, but, be but because it's what I thought I was worth. You know, I was so broken that even if the man in front of me in that relationship that I was in, or not even man, call it a friendship, even if that person wasn't toxic, I somehow found a way to make the relationship toxic because that was where I felt at home. That was where I felt comfortable. If everything was fine and happy, there was something that was not rested within me and I would find ways to turn it toxic. We create the environment that we're comfortable with even if we know it's not good for us. I think that's a common misconception too. We don't attract what we want. We attract what we think we are worth. Have you ever really asked yourself, what do you think that you're worth? Have you ever taken pen to paper and written it down? Trust me, it's a really hard exercise. And I did that and the things that came out were really, really surprising for me. I didn't realize until it was on paper just how broken I was because I struggled to say that I was truly worthy of great love, that I was truly worthy of great success, that I was truly worthy of even the attention that I was getting being on a television show. I was so broken and insecure that I didn't know my worth at all. And I didn't actually think I was worthy of any of anything that I was doing, receiving, getting. You know, sometimes the, air, the, the answers are staring straight at us. When you start writing, like one of them was, you know, I must work hard to be loved. That means I think I'm, it's difficult to love me. I remember what, not even I remember, it is still true. But I've had this thing since I was a kid that I just want everyone to love me. I just want everyone to love me and if they don't, there's something wrong with me. And that's when I would start changing things about me to make other people love me. And then all of a sudden, like, who is me? I don't even know who I am. I'm trying to be a different person for every person just so I can make everybody else happy and not myself. That shit gets confusing and it's exhausting and you lose yourself completely. You have absolutely no worth. The only person's love that matters is your own for yourself, your own opinion of yourself, your own self-worth, your own love. If you put your worth in someone else's hands, you will only be worthy as they make you out to be. That goes also for your intelligence. That also goes for your self-love, your creativity. If you're constantly looking for validation from other people, which is something that I used to do, you are constantly leaving it in someone else's hands. And it's never going to be enough. You're never going to get what you want or what you need. You're constantly going to be looking for more and more and more approval. And it makes you more and more and more hungry to change and desperate. And that make that entirely makes a person unlovable because the person in front of they don't know who they're looking at or who they're talking to because you don't even know who you are. Don't put your happiness and your success and your love and your worth and your intelligence in someone else's hands. They've got their own shit to worry about. Only you can take care of you. You know, until I went through this journey, I honestly had no idea about myself. I didn't have any appreciation for all the really hard stuff that I'd been through. I didn't respect myself enough to be true to myself. I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to eat on my own, what I wanted to do on my own. Heck, I didn't even know what I liked within intimacy. It was always molding to the guy that was, that was with me. And so it took a lot of learning and a lot of courage and a lot of bravery to face that, to look in the mirror, to try and figure out what I wanted and loved, lean into the, the uncomfortableness of saying the things that you want and you like, or of the uncomfortableness of going to see a movie on your own or to dinner on your own and being okay with your own company. That's something that we're all not very good at. I generalize. That's something that a lot of us are not very good at. My years of getting to know myself and getting to love myself have been a roller coaster journey, truly. One minute I am solid and I'm on top of the world and I've got this and then there can be a trigger and we all have triggers and it, it's about recognizing those and being able to deal with them. You know, I'm a walking cliche with daddy issues, with mommy issues. We all are. We all have environmental issues from, we have a, a core belief system of things that when we grew up, they shaped us and they molded us. And we have to crack those open and solve them if we're truly trying to be free of trauma, drama, 
uh, anything that's happened in our past to allow us to just exist in now and to move forward and to not be held back by something that happened to us when we were a kid, something that happened to us whenever. You know, being alone in your 30s can be terrifying and daunting. And you know what, honestly, being alone at any age, and I relate to 30s because this is truly where I feel it. You know, I, I turned 30, I was single, couldn't deal with the loneliness, got two dogs. Uh, and in the first part of that journey, I was going out all the time and uh, distracting myself with every and anything that I could, which was unhealthy. And then once I got into therapy and understanding and writing and journaling, uh, it helped a lot. But again, I'm five years into this and I am still growing and still learning. And I think it's important for you to know that, yeah, I woke up today and today wasn't a good day. Today I had to work really hard to get past my insecurities and my fears, my fears that maybe I'm never gonna meet that person, my fears that maybe maybe I actually am unlovable, my fears that I'm not doing enough, I'm not hustling enough, I'm not putting myself out there enough. The negative self-talk was constant from the minute I woke up. And one of the triggers, one of the stupid things that I did was I grabbed my phone to see if someone had texted me and then I went straight to Instagram. So I'm just banging on the door of negativity constantly. I didn't wake up to do my gratitude practice. I didn't wake up to meditate. I didn't wake up to do some self care. I went straight into the shit that I know sends me on a downward spiral. And I know that you would relate to that because how many of us roll over, the alarm goes off, we turn it off, and you pick up your phone. And whether it is your email, your Instagram, your TikTok, your what, any of the, the multiple things we can go to, it's never gonna be what you need. It is not how you need to start your day. It is not how you start with self-care and self-love and reminding yourself of your worth that no matter what you have moving forward in that day, even if it's a, a tough day ahead, reminding yourself that you are strong, you are powerful, you are capable, whatever your affirmations are that you need to have, reminding yourself of those starts your day with a solid foundation. And you can always breathe and come back to that moment that I screwed up today. I woke up today and did all the things to mess with my own mind. And it took time to get out of it. We're human. It is difficult. Self-worth and self-love is not something that you just magically get and then you have. And nobody, by the way, has it all the time. We have to remind ourselves that other people's stories and journeys are not our own. That we can't compare ourselves to what other people are doing, saying, thinking, creating, being, posting. You cannot compare yourself to any one individual on this planet because you are unique. And that is also what makes you incredibly special and wonderful and beautiful. And no matter the circumstances that you are in, and there are many right now, we're all feeling a lot of things that are going wrong and going on. No matter where you are, there is a place for you to have love and compassion for yourself. And when you do that, when you have love and compassion for yourself, you will find that you will treat those around you with love and compassion and patience. We're all in a place of just trying to do the best we can and trying to figure it out and manage the million curveballs that 2020 has thrown us. Don't judge, don't compare. Just understand that you are on a journey and so is everybody else. You have to remember you are not what happened to you. You are how you respond react and rise. Since discovering my self-worth and my self-love and the journey that I am on, I find that I have more balls to do what I want when I want. I work hard at a job that I love. I work hard at creating things because I love them. I know that I am love. I know that I am worthy of love. Who I am is love. What I am worth is love. You have to remind yourself every day and remind yourself that you won't settle for less than what you are worth. And even if you have to write it down every day whilst you're still trying to believe it, do it. Do it and believe that you are worthy of all the things. You are capable of more than you could possibly imagine. You all deserve 
to feel like kings and queens and you deserve to be treated like kings and queens. And when you start treating yourself that way and you start treating others that way, you'll find that it will be paid forward and it will happen. The rest of the people in your life, you'll have taught them how to treat you because you treat you that way. Show people how you want to be loved by loving yourself that way first. Show people what it means to be honored by honoring yourself that way first. And also have patience with yourself when like me, you wake up one morning and you do all the wrong things and you feel like a speck of dust that nobody even notices. And recognize that. And instead of just sitting in it and not trying to work through it, understand you have the power to work through it and to change it. Everything is energy. You can change your frequency by sitting with it, journaling about it, focusing on the things that are great in your life. Find anything, find three things that make you feel good and do a little bit of meditation to finish it off. You know, there is nothing sexier than confidence in a human being, truly. And for you to walk around with that confidence, for it to be genuine, because fake confidence, awkward. Awkward, uncomfortable, not sexy. True confidence makes you an automatic 10. Remember that. And no one else can give you that. No one else can love you enough to make you love yourself. You have to do it for you. If you love yourself wholly and completely and fully, wholeheartedly, you'll snag the person of your dreams. You'll snag the job of your dreams. You will create a beautiful world around you because you will have changed your energy and therefore you are attracting the things that you are worth. They are in the universe already. They are there. The things that you want exist. They're just waiting to come to you for when you're ready for them. So that is my rant for the day. That is my ramble. I wanted to share with you uh, that I am human as you are and we have good and we have bad days and I think it's important to support each other through those and to be vulnerable and be okay with being vulnerable so here I am being vulnerable with you saying today was a shit day but now it's a better day I love you all so very very much and I'm sending you all big big love I'm hoping that you took a little something from this video and you can go out into your day and have compassion and kindness, not just for yourself, but for the people around you. If you haven't already, start that journey of self-love and self-worth, journal about it, meditate on it, find that gratitude practice, talk to the right people about it and surround yourself with people that will support it because you are worth it and you can do and be and create and have anything that you want as soon as you know your worth. Sending you all big, big love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and all the things, but mostly please just share this around so maybe someone else can get the message just in case they need it because we all have shit days. Love you all.